What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I have five more design tips for you. Uh, I just want to start off by saying thank you very much for all the nice comments, all the likes. You guys are really awesome and you requested more tips. So here we go. I got five more for you. Uh, but first, let's get into the proper... Yeah, we're about to fix your islands. Okay, so the first one is for beginners. I got a lot of requests for more beginner tips. Um, this one may not apply to you, but if you're first starting out, this one is really key. So I wanted to show you my island first and pay attention to my house placement. And that was obviously strategically done because I wanted more of a village vibe. So the first, the first tip here is carefully arrange your houses and, and have your town in mind. So on the bottom, you can see all, all those houses are together. I have a few at the top and then two towards the side. Um, and you could do this easily in the beginning of the game when Tom Nook gives you the plots of land. Just make sure to put them out carefully. Like as you can see here, all my houses are evenly placed. Um, and I just think if you're going for the town aesthetic, it's visually appealing. I mean, it looks it looked great and it actually saves you a lot of money. So as you can see, my houses are very even. And then the ones at the top are actually all together too. So if you are later in the game, uh, you can still move your house. You just need to go to Tom Nook. It does cost 50,000 bells and it does take a real life day to do. Uh, of course, if you're time traveling, which I do not, you can just do it right away. But I think early game, if you're, if you want that village, if you have that kind of village mentality, strategically place your houses and you can save a lot of money in the long run. All right, guys, so tip number two is all about hybrid flowers. Now, you may have gone to your friend's islands or you may have even seen different colored flowers that normally don't grow on your island. So these pink roses, for example, are called hybrids. Now, the way that you make them, and again, this is a beginner tip. You can do this at any point in the game. Let me uh, run over to where I'm doing this. You're going to want to plant your flowers in some kind of a pattern. This one works the best for me. It's kind of like a checkerboard pattern with spaces in between. Now you can look online what color combinations make what colors, but as you can see here, I have a hybrid growing right there. They'll actually grow in the middle spaces that are left blank. So make sure to keep these blank because that's where the hybrids will grow. Another thing, the hybrids won't grow unless you water them. So make sure to water them and an easy way to tell if you have watered them or if another villager have, has watered them is the flowers will actually sparkle, meaning that they have been watered. Now this hybrid area, and I, I suggest you guys have some part in your island where you, know, you just grow hybrids, is kind of away from everything. I really don't use this. I have some growing here, um, but I, I kind of like to put these out of view because hybrid areas, I mean, you can make them look pretty, but normally they're just a group of flowers. So I kind of keep them out of sight. Uh, but yeah, these flowers here, and just to show you, let's dig these up, not those. Let's dig the hybrids up. And you will see in my inventory, pink rosebuds. So yeah, that's how you get hybrids and they really do make your, your island stand out. Um, I have a few, let me show you some of the hybrids I have. Okay, so right here, I do have the purple roses, which are hybrids. And then here uh, in my kind of town square, I have these blue ones, which I actually found these on the hybrid island. It's kind of one of the rare islands where you can find just a ton of hybrids everywhere, but you can grow these as well. So I just think they, they make your town really stand out. Um, and, you know, everyone has the red, the white and the yellow flowers. But, you know, if you find ones maybe like orange or black or something like that, there's really cool ones as well. You can get gold even. So I just think it's a it's a simple design trick that'll make your island stand out. All right, tip number three is probably the most important design tip there is, seriously, and that is fencing. So fencing can really define your island, and I think more so appropriate fencing is really the key to having like an aesthetically pleasing island. So right here, I actually did get a comment about how to make this area look a little bit better. And what I did is I just did stone fencing uh, and I put it all the way around. You could put it a little bit further out if you want to put flowers here, but I decided to put flowers on the outside. Um, but in terms of fencing, I think appropriate fencing is really the key. So for example, I, I'm going to go to my Zen area and this is more like a bamboo area. It's kind of more tropical. 
So I put this bamboo fencing. Um, I don't have that in any other part of my town. I have the stone fencing where my plaza is, but I have this simple wooden fencing in my town. So this fencing will be consistent all throughout my town. So as you, as you guys can see, it's all throughout my town. It's even down here. Um, and then over here where some of my other housing is, I have this fencing as well. Now I did kind of break my rule, but this is okay too. Uh, I have lattice fencing up here. So lattice fencing, I just did that for, I have Flora here and then my girlfriend right here. So these two, these two houses are just purely lattice and it just kind of makes these houses pop a bit more. Um, I'll show you guys a quick tip in a second, but um, you know, I was thinking, just kind of think of what you're trying to do with your island. So right here, obviously it's an apple orchard and I chose to do stone fencing. So again, just because I have it in my plaza doesn't mean I can use it or I can't use it anywhere else. So I think a stone fencing, when I think of an orchard, that's kind of what I think. Another fencing here is my baseball field. So this kind of looks the closest to like a baseball field uh, in terms of fencing. So I did that. And then you go to my park, which I absolutely love this color scheme, the blue um, kind of metal fencing, I think kind of looks like park fencing. So just have your theming in mind when you're, when you're choosing your fencing, but I really think it can make and break an island. All right, guys, tip number four, you may have seen the thumbnail. Um, this is all about dirt, which doesn't seem that exciting, but it can make a world of difference. So I have two examples right here. I have this tree with all flowers with no dirt, and I have this tree with dirt, and I just think it makes it pop. I think it makes the flowers pop, and it looks a bit more kind of professionally done. Like, I don't know, it, ju it just looks visually more appealing. However, guys, there is some exceptions where I don't think dirt is appropriate. So again, appropriate use of dirt, I guess will be tip number four. Um, now, not just with, with planting, but I also think dirt can be cool. So I have my baseball fence. This is kind of a mess because I'm just showing you guys, but dirt obviously for the baseball field. Dirt paths for more rustic areas like this orchard here, I think is appropriate. I also have like a farmer's market area where dirt is more appropriate than like a, I don't know, a brick brick flooring or something like that. See, like, I just feel like these flowers pop a lot more that they're in dirt. Um, this one obviously here, it's a garden. I just think it looks a lot better with dirt because yeah, you plant flowers in dirt. Now, I was talking about how flowers look can also look good without dirt. And it's kind of where you're doing it as well. Like these, I meant to just have like, kind of their flowers in the wild. You know, they're not supposed to be like professionally done like this. Like obviously these flowers aren't growing naturally like this. This is like man-made. So I guess if you're trying to go for the man-made look, put the dirt, but these are just kind of wild flowers. So they're like this. Another great example is my campsite, which I just finished last night and I have both. I have some flowers in dirt, some flowers just out in the open. So these obviously looks more like a man-made look. So I put dirt. Um, the flowers near these like wood stakes, these are supposed to be wild. So of course there's not going to be any dirt. Um, I also use dirt in this campsite uh, to kind of make it look more like a campsite um, right here with the bench. I just put dirt there, but see these have dirt and I think they pop. And then these are more just wild. So I guess, I guess the answer to that is like man-made put dirt. If it's supposed to be wild looking, then no dirt. But I think dirt can uh, make it look great. Like this path is dirt right here. And then this is supposed to be more of the town flooring. So I think it makes a, a world of difference. And who knew dirt can make your town look so much better. All right. And the last tip, it's kind of a cool tip. And that is to use all of your island. I've had many people tell me that my island looks a lot bigger than theirs, which obviously it's not. Everyone's island is the same, but I utilize space so well, I feel. And that's kind of why my island may look a bit bigger. But there's also some things that you could do with, I would say, dead space, space that normally you couldn't really do anything with. Um, and the answer to that is kind of make some sneaky areas. So right here, you can't really tell that anything's back there. You can see a little bit, but I think this is great. This area back here, I decided to put a pool and a chair. And this is normally area that I couldn't use. It's just behind a house and it's kind of unusable, but 
there's ways that you can do it. Also, so back here I have my Zen area. If you guys watched my house tour, you would have seen this. But, so this just kind of looks seemingly like a Zen area. However, I have areas over here. And I, utilizing these rocks also, you could put things on the rocks. I made a tiki bar. So, I mean, otherwise that would have just been a waste. Also back here, I have a little, you know, outpost where you can look far away and stuff like that. So I just feel like even though this isn't like looking great in terms of design wise, I think it's always cool when people have some hidden areas and they make it look like really cool. And it's kind of something that, you know, your friends can try and find or, um, but I think using all of your island is key, not necessarily for design, but making your island look a bit a bit more unique. Uh, these rocks though, I want to point that out is that you can you can put a lot of stuff on these rocks and I think that when I visit people's islands these rocks are kind of ignored a little bit so definitely use all of your island and make some sneaky spots all right because you guys have been so good I have one last bonus tip for you um, and this is kind of cool so when you talk to your villagers every day you can talk with them interact with them and you can also give them things now, one thing that I think is really awesome is you can actually give them these door wreaths. There's a ton of wreaths in this game. This just happens to be the rose wreath. Uh, but if you give your villagers gifts, they'll actually put the wreaths on their doors, which I think is so awesome. And it really makes the houses stand out. And I just think it's that little extra detail that can make your island look amazing. So there you go, guys. We are finally done. Those are five tips plus a bonus tip for you guys to make your islands look amazing. Thank you guys very much again. Look at all these nice comments on the screen. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.